Hello, my name is Jordan Klein, and I am the host of Fireside Paranormal Podcast. If you're into ghosts, UFOs, cryptids, the unknown, then pull up a chair and join me by the fire as we hear real stories from real people. Each episode, I interview paranormal investigators, authors, experts, and legends in their field. Here at Fireside Paranormal Podcast, we have something for everyone. If you're an experienced researcher or if you're just getting into it, we have a spot for you. We're found anywhere you listen to podcasts. So grab your friends, tune in, and remember, don't be afraid, only believe. You ever seen a ghost? Been abducted? Heard your name whispered from the other room when you're all alone? No, you say? Me either. But if you're like me, you're still fascinated by the paranormal. It seems everyone else has had an experience, and you want to believe it all. So why doesn't it happen to us? What does it all mean? How does it work? Is any of it real? Welcome to Paranorm Girl, a show that will attempt to answer these questions by taking the paranormal completely apart in search of proof. I'm not a blind believer, nor a hardened skeptic. I'm just looking for answers and willing to accept what I find. Welcome back to the Paranorm Girl Podcast. I am your host, Kristen. I've got a very special bonus episode prepared for you guys. No announcements today. I want to get right to it. Please enjoy my conversation with Santero and Witch, Dave Linnebury. My special guest today for this very special bonus episode is massively knowledgeable on things occult, witchcraft, supernatural, and high strangeness. Please welcome to the show artist and friend David Linnebury. Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> Good. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Yeah, yeah. Getting into anything fun on this uh, beautiful Sunday? It is a beautiful day, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just working on my cards and trying to get that thing done i have a lot of drawings to do so. yeah yeah so yeah so as people may uh recognize your name or more so recognize the uh instagram handle at davezilla.art uh they will recognize the tarot of the unexplained as i've been supporting it and promoting it last couple episodes i'm so very excited about it i just totally support this campaign and we will talk uh, more about it near the end of the episode but uh, how how close are you to finishing um there's 78 cards i'm at 64 so i'm really close okay yeah just right around the corner Awesome. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I saw you uh, You posted something recently about the court cards. You had just finished them or just started them? I just started those. That's all I have left is the courts. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to see it. I've been loving the designs that have been coming out. And uh, yeah, just uh, I can't wait to see it all done. But, I'm um, excited, too. Yeah. I appreciate your support. Thank you. Absolutely. Of course. Um, well, I, I rather than me try to explain to folks who you are, what what you're about, all of the the paranormal goodness that uh, that you know about and are into, maybe you could just kind of give us a little background on yourself. Sure. Um, I had the unfortunate experience of being born into a Baptist family, which, um, and I don't mean to down on Christians, but um, Baptists tend to be particularly fatalistic and very obsessed with the end of the world, which kind of made me kind of a depressed kid because I was always thinking, and plus, you know, I grew up in the 80s when we were under the constant threat of nuclear war. So I just assumed my days were numbered growing up. When I was 15, I had a weird experience in a bookstore. I was just kind of randomly browsing. I didn't have any goal in mind of what to buy. And a book literally fell off the shelf and landed on my feet. And I picked it up, and it was called The Book of Shadows by Lady Sheba. Um, it's, I think, back in print now, but it was out of print for a long time. And it was a, a – um, The Book of Shadows, I was like, that's an interesting title for a book. I had no idea what it was. Read it. I bought it and read it, and it was like, I didn't know there was an entire religion of witchcraft. I thought that was just something evil people did, you know, because I was raised Christian, so I got all the typical – uh, stere you know, stereotypical um, misconceptions about uh, witches are these terrible people, and they are in league with the devil and all this stuff. So when I um, 
read that no they're actually a bunch of kind of peaceful hippie types <laughs> that like to worship the earth and believe in protecting the earth and protecting each other and not harming people i was like my mind exploded and there's a strange phrase in the occult that's when the student's ready the teacher will appear and that happened to me literally um i went to a, a comics convention of all things in chicago uh, shortly after reading this book and met a covenant witches there and they all happened to be from Michigan where I'm from and so um, one thing led to another ended up getting um, initiated and I was just a, a teenager um, had a weird dream the night after the initiation I dreamt they the same witch just took me down in the basement of like a medieval tavern and it was literally like guys like clanking flagons of beer on the tables you know and yelling and it was like deafeningly loud and they said no 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 we're not going here we're going in the basement and i'm like okay and we went downstairs and all of a sudden it was just like this room with no end to it that was all darkness and a dirt floor and i could see them but it was no discernible light source you know typical dream kind of thing and they said strip and get on all fours and i did and then all of a sudden this black panther came out of the gloom and ran through my body and I woke up, like I literally woke up thinking that just happened. And, um, but in the dream, they had said, that was your real initiation. Fast forward a few years, I ended up getting initiated into another religion, this uh, Lukumi, which is more commonly known by Americans as Santeria. And the first thing I got in, they give you divination. And the very first divination I had, they said, you must always keep a black cat in your house for some reason. There's this weird association with you and black cats. And I was like, oh, interesting. And then later I got um, another reading that said, you need to be also initiated into Palomeombe, which was another one of those religions I'd always heard, oh, that's terrible. And I saw, you know, Criminal Minds said it was an evil religion. And no, it's not. It's an ancestor worshiping religion from the Congo. Um, and it sounds incompatible to have how can you be, you know, a Gardnerian witch and Santaria, I'm a Santero, and a Gangalero in Palomeombe, but all those things are compatible. They all work at the same time. It's okay. Um, we don't see any issues. Like I know people in Santaria who are also rabbis um, because there's no conflicting things. I know Buddhists who are in, our, in the same religion. You can have multiple beliefs going on if they're compatible and they work for you. And the one thing that really attracted me to Lukumi, to Santeria, was the divination. You don't have rules for everybody. Everyone gets their own set of rules. So the divination is only for you, no one else. The combinations that come up when they read um, only apply to you. Because some people, you know, some people can handle having their children killed in a school shooting, and other people can't handle their cell phone bills going up. And because of that, we all have different things that we're we need to be to learn in this lifetime and so we all get our own little set of rules and when you're a priest you get a book of cycles you'll go through and you just kind of do the best you can to, to get around it um, but all three of those religions are definitely um, associated with paranormal um, they definitely have some strange things going on in them I've seen some strange things and I've heard some stranger things that I wasn't part of wow isn't it crazy how you know, you you grew up 15 before this this book literally mm -hmm. <laughs> fell at you. Really fell at you. <laughs> um, how crazy it is when somebody decides to take the time to look a little deeper at these things that we have been told all along. Be afraid. Be very afraid. You know, you you don't want mm -hmm. any of what this is about. Uh, when you take the time to just look behind the curtain. I, I can't tell you how many times that has happened to me, and I discovered something not not terrible at all, something uh, wonderful and vast and light and like with love. You know, that's uh, it goes along uh, with the witchcraft, with with the uh, Santeria, um, with those other religions that that you spoke about. But because I've heard the same stuff, mm -hmm. I wish there was just an easy way to to tell people. Don't be, don't be afraid, you know, like, you know, get the education, learn more, try, try, I guess. Um, so this started all so quickly for you. Like, it, it sounds like it just kind yeah. of took off from that first moment in the bookstore. How, 
how, how willing were you at that point to believe this stuff since it kind of domino affected on you and just started happening one after another? How, how willing were you to believe, you know, the, the, the dream and, and get into, into the rhythm of this? I think I, I kind of always was. One, I had a, a weird experience when I was five, I'll tell you in a sec. Um, but I, I was always questioning stuff in the Bible that didn't make sense to me. And I always kept getting told, well, you have to take that on faith. And after so many times of that, you kind of go like, come on, I'm seeing things that are literal contradictions of each other, book to book. Like you look in the four gospels and they don't even have the same story about how Jesus was born. They don't have the same story about where he's from even. Is he a Nazarene? Is he an Israelite? Is he a Palestinian? Is he, you know, um, they're all different. Mm -hmm. And that kind of stuff drove me nuts. The one that really killed me was Noah's Ark. I was like, you know, wait a minute, penguins, what? How, how, <laughs> wait a minute, sloths cross the ocean? <laughs> yeah. How'd that happen? You know, and, and also I, I really believed in dinosaurs and I didn't, couldn't, that one I never saw. Yeah. One person pointed out to me that there was unicorns in the Bible, but not in Lord of the Rings. And I was like, what? Turns out, sure enough, Google it if you don't believe me, or I'll tell you the verses if you don't, if you want to hear them right now, but there's nine references to unicorns in the Bible. Ooh, would you, would you tell me I'm one? Do you have kidding. one ready? I'll be happy. Oh, here, so <laughs> here's a funny thing. I've heard Christians say, oh, those aren't talking about real unicorns. They're talking about uh, rhinoceroses. Well, there's no rhinos in Israel. I'm sorry. Those live in Central Africa. But also this one verse in Psalms 29, 6, he maketh them also to skip like a calf, Lebanon and Syria, like a young unicorn. Does that Skip like a calf sound like a rhino? It certainly doesn't. They're kind of plodding, <laughs> thundering beasts. I wouldn't really see them as being. Yeah. And all the other, the other verses kind of treat it like it's some type of, the unicorn was some type of animal used for a beast of burden, as a beast of burden. But I still, I was kind of shocked. I was like, wait a minute, there's nine times it's in here. What the heck? What, uh, what was the experience when you were five? Oh, <laughs> I was sledding down. We had a big backyard, really huge backyard that went into a forest. And I was sledding by myself one day and got to the end of the hill and stopped. And I just casually looked up at this old dead tree and something in the tree looked back at me from the bark of the tree. And I was like, what the heck just happened? I still to this day don't know what that was. Someone's told me that's probably some type of like wood spirit or something like, um like it was it really... was in the, like within the tree like a part of the tree yeah almost like the yeah like in wizard of oz when the trees had faces but not that not quite so defined kind of just like the tree just suddenly moved and smiled at me and i was like <laughs> um i i've never had anything like that since <laughs> i can uh, say hey maybe it was my imagination but kids tend to see things a little more true than adults do and because they're not as they're not as, um, you know, beaten down by, no, that's not real. No, that's not real. Yeah. They just say what they see. Yeah, they haven't had those those skeptical uh, blinders put up yet and those layers upon layers of skepticism. And no, you're not seeing that. No, that's not real. That person is just your imaginary mm -hmm. friend. Yep. Just had a good discussion about that, actually. Well, um, before we move on from, from your background and all that you're into, I... I did want to say, like, you know, the the Bible certainly doesn't do any any favors to like these these alternate, you know, for lack of a better word, alternate religions around the world that they just mm -hmm. espouse as just evil and dark and all of that. Um, uh, Hollywood certainly doesn't either, like with African, no. Afro-Caribbean witchcraft. Um, Hollywood has done a pretty big disservice, as as you have told me. Would you mind talking about that a little bit? Yeah, that's 100% true. If you've seen any movie like The Believers or, um, or like I said earlier, the um, version of, um, there was one episode, actually several episodes on Criminal Minds where they talked about Paolo Mayombe. Um, but of course, anything in Hollywood that involves a religion with black people is immediately evil. Mm -hmm. And Santeria, which is Africans and Hispanics, must be double evil. So when you see portrayed any African religion, especially uh, voodoo, which is another religion from the Congo and Dahomey regions, you see like it's always portrayed the same way. There is one male who's in charge of everything. There's a bunch of drummers doing a very tribal sounding drum beat. 
and a bunch of um, black women who suddenly have lost their clothes and are writhing about unable to control their urges. None of that happens. Mm -hmm. None of that happens in any of those religions. And there's no point where this guy takes a knife and swings it down at a, at a bird and blood flies everywhere. Does animal sacrifice occur in these religions? Absolutely. Do we eat the animals afterwards? Yes. That's the big part that, that they don't put in there. And also that we, the way we sacrifice is the same way rabbis do. It's just like kosher. We do the exact same method. It's very mundane. Um, there's nothing dramatic about it. And again, we afterwards, after the animal's been presented to the Orisha, which is our conversion of God, it's clean and cooked and we eat it. Because yeah. third world countries don't throw away meat. Yeah, yeah. And that, that, that one always killed me. It was like, well, we don't know. There's, you know, when you see things in the, you know, upside down tentacles and lots of black handles, but that's like generally like kids putting things out. And they might have killed a rat or something or a toad to make it scarier. They do that just to get attention. It has nothing to do with any real religion, you know. None of that stuff's real. But Hollywood does has a definite deep-seated racism towards um, African religions and African-based religions, and they will not show them um, legitimately. Yeah, as ever. they as they really are. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's that's an old ugh, old fear-based and and I guess religious-based. Mm -hmm thing um they just can't let go of it it's it's far more flashy and 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 interesting to to strike fear and, and make it seem you know savage would be the word that they would apply That's to that yeah 100 percent. that is exactly it they like to keep the image that black people cannot control their emotions that what they do is black magic is evil even even the constant association that black people and black magic you know and it's like that's that's ridiculous you know yeah, well, you you must have some feelings towards mainstream religion and and ideology coming from that Baptist upbringing and ending up where you are now. Do you do you have any like anger towards them? Like just disappointment? Like well, how do you look at it now? I think the brainwashing of a lot of the Abrahamic traditions is a little disappointing, um, and a lot of people who leave those three religions tend to have a hard time unlearning and you hear a lot of people you even hear things like I'm a recovering Catholic and they're literally associating it with alcoholism and I totally agree with that um, and I have nothing against the Christian religion I still read I read the Bible still I think it's an interesting book mm -hmm. um, it's funny in some parts but it's a it's a really great religious work I also like the Bhagavad Gita I like the Vedas I like the Odu I like the I Ching. Um, they're all important. You can learn something from any of them. It, I don't diss the religion. I diss the participants who don't know how to actually participate in their religion properly. And I think that's the biggest problem. There's nothing wrong with Christianity. There's a, there's a lot wrong with Christians, especially when most of them just go to church to, you know, gossip about each other and what they wore and who showed up and who didn't and that kind of thing. And I grew up seeing a lot of that. Yeah. You know. And unfortunately, they, they, a lot of them don't actually read the Bible or or the the teachings of Jesus, which I uh, they are right. good teachings. They can teach you to be yep. a better person, and uh, and they don't read that stuff or or I don't know misinterpret it. No, they like to pick and choose verses that work for them, in particular from the Book of Leviticus, which is a bunch of uh, Pharisee laws that came out after they realized that the Ten Commandments weren't enough. Like, oh, he said he didn't say anything about goat rape. I guess that's cool. That's still on the table, you know. Well, the Great Pharisees were like, ah, crap, we got to write some more laws. So they came up with like 200 something more laws. And, you know, if you say something to a Christian, like, well, do you eat shellfish? You should be killed, man. Like, that's what it says in Leviticus. And mm. like, what does, we don't follow that one anymore. That's kind of an outdated. It's like, okay, well, the one about killing gay people and witches is in there too. So who made you the judge that gets to decide which of those verses is okay? Yeah. And yeah. it's literally the book of Leviticus that they, they pick and choose what they like. Because it's great for their politics and their um, arguments. Yeah, yeah. So if you hear that verse <laughs> or you hear that book mentioned, you know, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Give me something from the New Testament. Yeah, I think the the New Testament's a little a little lighter. That's, that's supposed to be what they're going by, anyways. <laughs> oh yeah. man. Well, um, I would be interested if you're okay sharing, uh, hearing sure. a little bit, a little, few more of your paranormal experiences. Oh yeah. Um, first, let me tell you one that I heard about, and I wish I saw this, but I didn't. And it was a Santero in New York, 
um, at Central Park. They, a bunch of Santeros were having a big um, gathering at probably a bembe, which is a, a drum ceremony. And they had a bonfire going and a huge bonfire, apparently enough that the fire department came out and said, you guys cannot do this. And this old Santero from Puerto Rico got up and said, no, no we're doing this. And they squirted the fire out and she took a, a uh, blanket and shook it at the smoldering wet ashes and they burst back into flames and she turned and looked at them and they said, have a nice day, ma'am. <laughs> and they left her alone. <laughs> All right. All right. What about one that, uh, that you did experience? More, I would say in Wicca, I've seen things. Um, there was one night I was with our coven and we were, had just finished circling and something that I still am not sure if this was ball lightning, but it was blue. Hmm. A large ball, about a, a little bigger than a tennis ball, and it was neon blue, came whipping through the house, and we literally chased it into the laundry room until it disappeared. And we were like, what the heck was that? Whoa. And we still can't figure out, was that some kind of like weird orb spirit, or was that like ball lightning? Oh, We've wow. never seen anything like that, or again, but it was really cool. Because it was it was just that so like like profound, like it was it, physical? It was physical, but also it moved slow enough that we could physically chase it. Like I was thinking the thing with ball lightning is lights pretty fast, and this didn't move that fast. It was kind of like the same speed we were running. Whoa. Well, okay, so you mentioned coven. How, how often yep. do you meet with your coven? Oh, not so often. Um mainly because of personal obligations with kids and things like that. But when you do those, a lot of times it's around the seasonal holidays. So there's, there's like eight major holidays for witches. Um, a lot of them were uh, Christians have taken over and co-opted to kill them. Like we have one on February 2nd that they now call candle mass or something, but we had different names for in bulk. Um, Christmas is Yule. Mm -hmm. The four, the equinoxes and the solstices are, critical um Samhain it's not pronounced Samhain if anyone says that please stop saying that it's Samhain it's Irish okay <laughs> it's an old word um Irish spelling does not make sense <laughs> with their pronunciations so um the band is the band is Samhain the holiday is not but it's a very old that's a celebration of the of the ancestors and the dead and um Wiccans only have one holiday a year for that whereas like in Santeria it's pretty much every day you celebrate your ancestors and you have to keep up ancestor altars all the time and i think that's important too they they really believe that that's like you you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for your ancestors and your grand and that means that doesn't mean like ancient people it can even just mean your grandpa your parents your uncles and aunts all those people they're who you made you um, people that you, people that you, for some reason have a weird connection to, you know, like I have this strange connection with Oscar Wilde. I like, I put him on my ancestor altar. I think you can do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're all connected and related somehow, you know, take it all the way back. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, uh, told me about, you know, kind of uh, honoring, uh, ancestors. I, I was asking you around mm -hmm. the Halloween show, and that is yeah. something that I did that Halloween, and I will continue to do so now that I know more about my ancestry. Um, definitely mm -hmm. a lot of people in the past to thank for being here today. Absolutely. If you go in most um, Chinese and Thai restaurants, a lot of times you'll see a little tiny altar on the wall, and it's almost always an ancestor altar. Oh. Um, there may be a like one, well, yeah. Those they're very respectful of their ancestors too. Uh, it's not just the Africans, but um, it's a big it's a big thing. You, you're here because of them. You're here because of their DNA. It's passed down to you, and that brought all these instructions with it and made you who you are. So honor it. They have a great phrase in Africa that's we stand on the shoulders of those who went before us. I love that. Yeah. Well, the so the concept I asked about the coven because the the concept of a coven is not really something I, I thought about um, before mm -hmm. uh, before talking with you today, because it's not really, maybe it's just not like in, in the mainstream anymore. It's just not something that's that that people talk about so so freely nowadays, just, you know, regular folk who aren't involved in, mm -hmm. in this world. Um, so it just didn't occur to me that that people do still, you know, they, they come together and, you know, for special occasions, and they do these, you know, rituals or whatever the case may be. So your involvement with 
uh, witchcraft with with Wicca, um, all of that yeah. uh, really intrigues me. And we did speak before recording today about uh, possibly talking about some misconceptions and myths uh, about witchcraft and, and paganism um, that people might still have today, if you're yeah. ready to yeah. jump into it. And coven's a good one. I mean, Hollywood seems to have co-opted that word now for vampires. Uh, yeah, <laughs> what? exactly. Case in point. I, I don't hear it for witches anymore other than maybe charmed. <laughs> um, yeah, you don't hear it so much. <laughs> oh, speaking of Hollywood, I was going to say one of the biggest ones is that, and I heard this from Christians, was that uh, there's a, the Hollywood and the government in the U.S. are run, um, run by witches. And that Proof of that is the shape of the Pentagon and all that stuff. And I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, so strange. Yeah, I mean, that one, that, that sounds very conspiracy theory-minded, and I've heard a lot of people kind of thrown into that um, that that bus uh, that, you know, the the, the others are, are running the government and they're running Hollywood. Right. So it does not surprise me that, that y'all get, get thrown, thrown in there into too. it yep. too. Yeah. Sure. Here's, here's, I can just prove it real quickly. You can't get one coven to all show up on time to a, to a ceremony. There's no way they could get their shit together to run a government. <laughs> um, we even have a thing called pagan standard time, which means you show up when you show up. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and we also have, the, I mean, most, you can't, most pagans don't all agree in the same thing, the same beliefs. They don't all believe in the threefold law. They don't all believe in the, the Wiccan read and all that stuff. Everybody, most people do, but not everyone does. Mm hmm the threefold law is basically if you do something, it comes back on you three times. Do anything? Like like just bad things or just anything? Oh, uh, well, it could be, yeah. If you curse someone, it's going to come back on you three times. If you And I'm like, well, wait a minute. If you killed a person through a hex, does that mean you get killed three times? What does it mean? <laughs> um, how does that work? Um, but also it's supposed to be good things. Like if you put out a, a money spell, you get back three times more than you thought, especially if you did something for someone else. Oh. You know, but I don't really buy that one. I think it just sounds clever and cute but it's a little too bumper stickery for me <laughs> yeah yeah i don't know I, I i think three has always been kind of an important number as far it as is. uh yeah yeah r ritualistic things and i have noticed like certain things in life often come in threes and maybe that's just my imagination I don't and know. you just said that it was three thirty three thirty three on my oh it clock, is i'm looking at really my, oh my goodness oh my well i'm an God. hour behind you but uh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow um Weird. yeah and um yeah, that was weird. Um, yeah, Tesla said, if you understand the number three, you will understand the universe. Oh, okay. Oh, my gosh. I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up. I've been doing something that, that Tesla also talked about. So he, he was big on the, the three, six, nine, those yep. numbers. Um, and there's, uh, there's something I'm playing around with for the new season where I have to do throughout the day certain things three times, six times, nine times. And it's just supposed to be this magical energetic manifestation thing so I'm, I'm curious to see how it all comes out but that's interesting three you brought is, that up yeah three is big in pretty much every religion even for christians they have their trinity yeah yep which they you know might have borrowed from <laughs> some other things they borrowed from the sumerians yep yeah yeah all right well what's a what's another misconception that we've all got oh that we worship the devil or demons because that's why, you know, when you see pictures of the devil, he's always red and has cloven hooves and horns and all that. It's like, no, that actually just was, a, you guys stole that from the Greek god Pan or from the English god Kronos or Hearn or the Basque god Janica. I mean, these are, these are really old horn gods that have been around a long time. Uh, the belief in them has been around a long time. Um, but Satan is not supposed to be a, a person or an object. He's supposed to be like an, originally an angel, mm -hmm. the highest angel and so beautiful he was impossible to look at. So why would he suddenly turn into this ugly red little thing? That I don't get. But also they just like to co-op things to make it scarier. And, you know, things that look like Krampus or, you know, or Pan are, are spooky. So it makes a great uh, enemy or foil to whatever they're doing. But we don't. We don't believe in the devil. We don't believe in demons. We don't. Um, do we believe there's malevolent spirits? Sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I've seen them. But um, are there things that are, I shouldn't say I've seen them, but I've encountered them. Um, but are, but it's not that. It's not the devil. Yeah. And 
the devil would have a, I mean, there's 7 billion people on this earth. I really don't think he's going to show up to your ghost hunting thing, you know? He's, <laughs> he's got more shit to do than that. <laughs> I, just, I don't know. Well, one, I'm glad you made the distinction between, you know, devil and demons versus a malevolent spirit or energy yep. like there is definitely a difference and you know how i feel about the devil and demons you listened to the last season so oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> learned a lot on that one but it was interesting yeah oh, i mean good. I... good i i personally oh, yeah. love the history stuff that the history learning the history alone about something is going to blow down all of the walls of what you know your preconceptions where everything you thought you knew can be just dashed in in a single episode like that one and that's what it did for me and you know the idea of the devil and satan and lucifer and learning they all had all their own different histories it was crazy to go through it but um yeah that was my favorite oh yeah how these things get mixed together over time and one thing that it's it's difficult for americans to understand in particular is that in other nations people aren't so categorical about their religions like i had a friend from africa who told me yeah you know i'm i'm I worship be fa, but if my next door neighbor is Muslim and he's got a ceremony that I think would help me, I'll, I'll incorporate it. And same thing, if I do a spell that they think is interesting, they'll incorporate it. They don't see the division. They just, hey, we're all on the path, right? Is kind of how they see it. Whereas Americans are like, no, you are this. You must be this. You cannot change this. And I don't know why we're so dogmatic about it. If it's I mean, we're, we're, a, we're or a society of us, them, me, you, you know, and that, that very, division. Yeah. Yeah. Very that. Um, <laughs> well, you, you are, so you did uh, tell me two other ones before that kind of made me laugh when you said it before. Um, the, the inability to walk into churches. Oh and... God, I've heard that one so many times. <laughs> <laughs> and and the inability to touch crosses or read the Bible, both of those points, aren't those vampiric as well? And who knows on that even? I mean, I don't know. I mean, the yeah, the walking into tr yeah, that probably is from vampire law more than anything. I know at least you can't. Um, they can't go into your I, house without your permission. But I think church. Well, I don't know. Right. Maybe I don't know. But yeah, they're, they're definitely touching the crosses, and I don't think they can. You know and. I even saw in one of these talk shows in the 80s, someone was, it was like a minister. And she's like, you're wearing all black because you're evil, you Wiccans. And he's like, um, so are you. <laughs> and she was. Okay. And, uh, but but it, it's, no, it doesn't matter. We don't, I go and I go to weddings. Those are in churches. <laughs> I go all the time. It doesn't bother me. I don't mind. I love the artwork and, and the architecture of churches. So I don't, there's no, that's, that's a, that one's garbage. There's nothing stopping us. There's no, you know, <laughs> um, I can touch crosses all day. In fact, I have a bunch. I love Mexican crosses with milagros all over them. I have a bunch of those hanging up. I love that stuff. Um, and as you can tell from, I actually have a pretty good biblical knowledge. I can quote all day. I do read the Bible. Um, nothing against it. Okay. All right. Well, what's, uh, what's a few more? Mm, everything we do is an inversion of what they do. Catholics in particular believe that one, that we, we invert all their rights. And it's like, um, no, we don't even like your rights. <laughs> <laughs> They're really boring and slow and long. And uh, no, <laughs> no, and we don't want to touch altar boys. No, none of this. No, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is yeah. We don't we don't have anything to do with that. Our stuff's all based on the earth. It's got nothing to do with them. I don't know where any of that stuff comes from. Yeah, because you know, Wiccan stuff tends to be all old Indo-European and folk magic, and you know, the Afro-Caribbean tends to be more. Um, stuff from Nigeria, Mali, Dahomey, and um, the Congo. Yeah, and, um, yeah, they were their own yeah. things, you know, before uh, the, the Catholic and yep. Christians came along. Yeah. They sure were. And they all have their own story of a God who got resurrected. They all have a story of a flood. They all have a story of a God that takes care of the world and then is too busy to talk to people. And all that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the same story over and over again. <laughs> um, oh, we, I, was, <laughs> I hear a lot that we actively seek out teenagers to join covens i'm like well, no we kind of don't want them wait you don't and, recruit um, young people annoying. before they can <laughs> teenagers are annoying yeah. god have you spent time with goth teenagers no <laughs> no i avoid it yeah i'm i'm too old they would just be like oh dude you know like <laughs> it's like a gray hairs in your beard <laughs> um no they don't you know um, we don't we don't think of anybody. It's like, in fact, in uh, the, a real word for the for Santeria is la regla de ocho lucumi, 
which is a mouthful, but it literally means owners of the selected heads. It means only the Orisha can select you to be in our religion. You can't come in, you can't join. If you weren't selected, we actually have a sign in divination that we call the goodbye white girl sign. And um, it basically means like, this isn't for you. You ain't got the funk in you. You can't be part of this religion. <laughs> oh, oh, I had no idea. Oh yeah, you can get turned away. Absolutely. For in certain signs, it's like you, and there's, there's even signs in the divination that say, you know what, you should be an atheist. You're not going to be happy with any religion. Well, how would one, um, if one wanted to to be a part of this, take part in this? Of course, the Orisha are, you know, they have to choose. Like, is that is that just through like signs, or does a um... you you yeah yeah you get a um a divination done for you? It's not like a tarot reading. It's a lot more involved, and it's it's pretty formalized. It's kind of strange ceremony, but it's interesting. And then once you get that done, the, the result of your very first reading is important because it, it'll determine whether or not you had a place in this or not. And they'll tell you, you know, this isn't for you right off the bat. And if it is, then the Orishas might have brought you there for a reason. And when you get, there's another ceremony that we call it getting your head marked. That's a much lower, longer divination ceremony where they find out who is your Orisha? Because we all have one like a guardian angel, but we don't get to pick them. They pick us. So like mine is not what I would have chosen. I, I mean, it's not that I have anything against her, but people that see me think like, Oh, you probably have like some, you know, because I kind of look like a biker. And a lot of people are like, well, you probably have some like tough one, like Chango. I'm like, nope, I actually have the um, Yemaya, who's like the mother of the world. And she's the ocean and she's everything feminine. You would not expect that. But that's who I have. But maybe it's maybe it's decided based on what you need, not what you want. Yes. Yeah. 100%. Oh, wow. Very cool. Okay. Okay. Are y'all uh, having drunk orgies? I know that. That must be a fact. Oh, um, maybe after, but <laughs> you know that could be after the bar too. You know, no, yeah. we don't really do that. It's, um, I've heard of some. There are, I'm sure there are some um, covens that do that that get are, that are literally into the like Bacchus and the Bacchus cult and all that and get into what they call Bacchanalia. Yeah, I'm sure that exists. I just don't know any. Most of the ones I know, I do know. Um, there's a lot of uh, just stupid term sky clad which I hate, but it basically means your coven practices nude outdoors. I've been in one of those before. It's not a big deal. I don't see any difference between wearing clothes or not wearing clothes. Yeah. St yeah. Stuff that works, but we don't know. That's not really a thing. You know, the whole, the whole junk and orgy thing. It's no. <laughs> yeah. No, no dancing naked around a fire in the moonlight with the devil. None of that. No, it's more like an Epstein Island thing. It's yeah. not really dark. You're, you're disappointing yeah. uh, maybe some of my Christian listeners right now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. Oh. all right. What else? What else are we missing? Well, let's see. I always say Halloween is our favorite holiday, but oh, all right, that's actually true. Um, sorry, because <laughs> it's Halloween. Um, actually, though, I do know a lot of pagans who, who love Christmas, and I still put up a Christmas tree. I celebrate Christmas with my kids. I love Christmas. It's cool. I do too. You know, it'll never stop being the the nostalgic thing for me. And it's not, you know, of course, it's not about the, the material and the buying and the, that rush, but there's just something very special about the energy that happens. It shifts um, around that time. Yeah. You feel it. Especially when you look back at like the 19th century Christmas when it's, you know, the Dickens era, you see that it was all about ghost stories. You told ghost stories on Christmas and that's why the Christmas Carol was written. It's like people we're really into that idea of the dead being around back then. Whereas for Wiccans, it's actually Halloween is the time when we claim that the, the veil between the worlds is thinnest. But here's my old, my argument's always been this against that phrase. It drives me nuts. Veils are thin. <laughs> you mean it's thinnest. <laughs> Isn't the definition of a veil thin? <laughs> Not like we say, like, you know, the, the heavy <laughs> um, shag carpet between the worlds. <laughs> yeah. The high parted. school auditorium no. curtain is the thinnest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's being pulled back by goblins right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, that doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think that you're, you're always, if you're in touch with your ancestors, they're there all the time. There's no time with better or worse. It just feels cooler at that time of year. I don't know, there's something because everything's dying and the uh, harvest is happening and all that. It's just, there's something about that time. But I think same for Christmas. There's just something about that time of year that just feels really good. It has nothing to do with, I don't think it's so much religious as it is just the time of year and, and what we've done with it. Yeah, yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm right there with you. Absolutely, I agree. All right. What about, uh, what about people who, who make you mad? Oh, 
see, we don't, so most Wiccans will be quick to point out that we have a, what they call the Wiccan read, but it's like, um, in which is, and you harm none, do what you will. Basically, whatever you want to do is okay, as long as it doesn't hurt anybody, that includes yourself. So you don't do meth, because that'll hurt you, you know. You want to have a drink once in a while? That's totally cool. That's not hurting you, unless you get drunk and get in an accident with someone, then it's not cool. So all that stuff, but that, it, it applies to every part of life, not just, you know, not just your, your craft. It's, it's everything, and if, if you really, really believe that. And I do. Um, I don't like hurting people. I, don't, I, know, I know a few witches who are constantly hexing other people. I really do. And you know what? They are exhausted physically, emotionally. They're broke. They don't look so good all the time. I mean, they always look like they just got off a bender. It's not a good idea. I mean, that stuff does kind of come back to you, but also it sucks your energy out. And why would you want to put all that hate out in the world? I got better things to do. Maybe there's more to that threefold law. I, I think I think if people are constantly putting it out at some point, your um, ancestors are going to be like, what is wrong with you? And turn their backs on you. And then you get no help. Okay. So you, you don't hex, you don't hex people. No, I don't. And I don't even believe in things like, I don't believe in love spells that are for an addition for like a specific person. I think that's black magic. Mm -hmm. When you try to get one person and change their will, it'll work. But you will now have a slave that is, uh, there's no idea why they're infatuated with you. And they are not the person you wanted. They are kind of a, something's wrong with them now. Oh. It's not cool. Yeah. I don't think that's cool to take over the will of another person. Um, so a general love spell that's like, you know what? I would like love in my life. That's a good thing to do. That's fine. You deserve that. But picking out somebody specific? Ooh. Yeah. You just said the difference between possession and, you know, manifestation, manifesting something. 100%. Yeah, we don't like, yeah, I don't like that. Um and there's lots of books you'll see at bookstores in the occult section about love spells. And I'm like, eh, you know what? Just write your intentions down, put some perfume on it or cologne and put it in your drawer and leave it alone. That's, that's probably enough. I don't believe in binding spells either. And I know those are supposed to be neutral, but I don't think they are. Um, and I'll tell you why. I knew of someone who was a total asshole Karen, sorry my language, um, and was really bothering a friend of mine at work to the point where he thought he was going to lose his job. Did a binding spell on her. She ended up the next day in a car accident in traction, literally bound up. She's a single mom. Her kids had no one to take care of them. That's why I don't do binding spells. You don't do, you don't mess with things like that where you don't know what the outcome will be. You know, if you're going to do something, you got to ask yourself, if that was done to me, would I deserve that? And now wait 48 hours and ask yourself that again. You know, you need to have, yeah, it's just not, not a good thing to do. There's better ways of resolving that. Okay. All right. La last one. Do you, um, do you have like telepathic powers? Are you shooting lasers out of your eyeballs? Anything like that? Crazy? Absolutely. I can breathe underwater too. Since I was the queen of the ocean, I'm like a dolphin now. No, um, we don't. No, we don't. Everything you saw in Charmed is, a, is garbage. There's no special powers. Um, when you actually do spells and things, whatever was going to happen naturally happens, but faster. Like you just accelerate the timeline of when it, you know, like if you were supposed to wait two weeks for the second interview of your job, Hey, we just moved up your interview to two days. Is that okay? Yes. Thank you. You know, things unnaturally move faster, but they don't, it's not like you can't make anything unnatural happen. You can't make, you know, you're, you're not going to change your skin color or turn in, you know, you can't make someone's, make lightning come down and blow someone's house apart or things like that. That's just, those things aren't possible to do. Um, now, I don't know what the ancestors are capable of doing, but I know that sometimes some bad things happen. Um, I knew one person who was told in their divination in Santeria, um, if your name is called, don't ever turn around. Just keep walking. Like out in the woods or something? Anywhere. And for 10 years, did fine. One day, heard his, was crossing the street, heard his name called, and it was someone he hadn't seen in years, and he turned around and a bus killed him. <gasps> Whoa. Oh, that, I, so, I just got goosebumps. That was weird. Yeah. We have, um, we have a thing in our religion that you get. It's, um, I don't want to describe it, but it's kind of like this little statue thing that if it falls over, it kind of means your life's in danger. And it's made of pewter, so it's, and it's got a big base to it. Um, so it's pretty hard to break it, you know, it, I mean, it's, it's solid 
And there's a woman in our in, in the ILE I was part of that said um, she called up one day and she said, uh, "My uh, it's, it's called Osun." She goes, "My Osun, um, I came home from work and um, it was on the ground." We're like, "Oh no!" And she goes, "And it's crumpled in a ball like a giant took his fist and crushed all the metal into a ball." We're like, "What?" <laughs> and then we went over to go and like two of the priests just like bolted for her house. And when they got there, she wasn't there. And we don't know what happened to her. We've never seen her again. Whoa, she just disappeared? Literally, yeah. Like her house was still there. Her cat was there. Her apartment was, everything was still the way it was. She just was gone. Wow, wow. Yeah, it freaked us out. So there's, oh my gosh, there's definitely um, definitely something uh, kind of mysterious happening there with a, with a situation like that. I wouldn't even know how to explain that. Um, but for the most part, what I'm hearing here is that y'all are a logical um down to earth mm. bunch <laughs> and yep. uh, and that does not sell the papers dave not as exciting as people wanted it to be not as yeah <laughs> not as not as many dirty secrets oh well thank yeah. you thank you for sharing all of that with us i appreciate the education well, before uh, before we get to the end here, I do want to talk a little bit about the Tarot of the Unexplained and the Kickstarter mm-hmm. campaign you got going for it. Uh, before I ask you about the deck, I'm curious about your technique because these designs are uh, so polished and distinct. Like, how, how are you doing it? What's your medium? Oh, uh, Adobe Illustrator would be my medium. Um, I'm drawing all these um, from my head on my computer. A couple of these are people that I um, know. I'm sure you've recognized one of the cards. Nice. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> um, and the court cards is going to be a lot more people um, like that that will pop up. That you'll be like, at least um, a circle of people that I know will be like, oh, is that? Yes, it is. <laughs> you know, kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. So the um, but but I most of the time I just you know like yetis and stuff. I don't know what they look like for real. So I just draw them on my head and the UFOs in the cards I did you know just strictly based on thinking about old sci-fi movies and a little bit about how people described them. But I tried to keep it slightly tongue-in-cheek and slightly um, you know, because I cryptids and and stuff are funny to me in a way Mm -hmm. but they're also you know like i don't necessarily believe in any of them but i love the idea of them and ufo stuff i have a weird connection to um so i used to work at the los alamos national labs and i always bugged them about ufos and every time i brought it up they would just like they wouldn't say no they wouldn't say that's above your clearance rating they just would be quiet for a second and then they would go on and change the subject like nothing it's like i hadn't said anything oh that's not suspicious at all it was frustrating really frustrating have you actually seen a a, a ufo or had that experience i i thought i did um one time and i was driving down there's a huge freeway that goes from detroit all the way to the florida keys called i-75 and i was driving down there on um rush hour one day and the sun was setting And all of a sudden, I see this bright, gleaming object, and a couple other cars started slamming to a stop. And a bunch of people got out of their cars and got their phones out and started trying to take pictures of it. And I did, too. And all of a sudden, it turned, and we started laughing because we realized it was not a UFO. It was a seagull that was wet, and the water was reflecting off the sun so brightly that it looked like a gleaming metallic object. I mean, you could not make out any shape of this thing. It looked like a... a big amorphous shape that was bouncing up and down in the air. But I was like, oh, this is a seagull, you know, <laughs> but it totally threw me off. But no, other, otherwise, man, I haven't really, I have n- I've never seen one. Um, my other weird experience with that, though, our connection to UFOs is I used to work with a guy named Kit Green, uh, Dr. Kit Green, when I was at GM. And he is, um, if you look him up on the Wikipedia page, you'll, he was part of MK Ultra and a bunch of other creepy projects. You yeah, know? yeah, I recognize the name. Yeah, he. Um, yeah, I actually mentioned him in the uh, video at, on my Kickstarter page. I put him in the credits. <laughs> he's a he's a nice fellow, but kind of spooky. Oh yeah, 
All right. Yeah. You know, I've had one uh, one experience. I've never told anybody. Maybe I'll tell it oh, really yeah? quick. There's not much to tell. Um, yeah, I was a teenager, and I, I lived out in the you know backwoods, nowhere of Montana, and I was walking down a dirt road uh, back home. And I'm just walking along, and I look up in the in the sky, and there was this ball. Of, I, all I, I can describe it as like a like a ball of f- flames flaming something and I wouldn't say it was hovering it just it wasn't like moving quickly quickly but it was, it was close like it wasn't something out in the outer sphere or anything it was close and it was just this profoundly big ball of flames and and it just stayed there for a little bit and I, I don't remember if I looked away and then it was gone or if it just kind of went mm. off and, and disappeared on its own and I remember thinking at the time I was like oh my gosh is that a you know is that a plane that's on fire is that is that another comet like what's going on I, I bet they'll talk about it you know in the local news Whoa. nothing nothing in the local news nobody I, I asked or talked to at that time had seen this thing and it was just so there you know and just so odd odd looking wow yeah so I don't know maybe that was Something. Uh, <laughs> well, back yeah, to. I wished I saw one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know my dad has seen a lot. He he's got stories to tell. I'll have him on someday. Oh, you should. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he's an interesting fellow, old minister as well. Um, but back to your back to the tarot. Uh, what was what was the initial inspiration behind creating this deck? Um. So I, uh, I think it was a year or two ago I started. I did like one of those 30 day challenges of drawing on Instagram and I decided to do cryptids and it was the most popular thing I've ever done. Usually my drawings are kind of more on the occult side and this wasn't. And I got tons of followers and I was like, Oh, that was funny. And I've always kind of liked them. Like I've got, I've always had books on this stuff and I've had books on UFOs and paranormal, all those things. But I was thinking like, God, it'd be fun to like put all this together into a tarot deck sometime. And I just kind of mused about it. And then my wife's like, do it, mm-hmm. dude, do it. No one else can do that. Like you could. And I'm like, okay, I'll do it. And the reaction has been really good. I'm having a blast. I like the idea of putting things that some people view as different camps. I view as all kind of the same. Like pe- there's people like Jacques Vallée that believe UFOs are part of us part of, of spirituality not not a not a separate alien race necessarily and there's other people that are all like no 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 they're, they're here to you know the grays are going to eat us or whatever you know it's there's so many different views on all that stuff but there's other people that say same thing with bigfoot that it's some type of spiritual um manifestation and other people say no it's an alien other people are like no it's gigantopithecus and i don't know everyone's got their own theories but i kind of like the theory that all this stuff is connected there's all something weird about it and if you've ever read Robert Anton Wilson's books, one thing he talks about is that, man, once you start getting into this, you realize there's some type of cosmic jokester somewhere. The concept of the trickster God is big <laughs> and he likes messing with us. <laughs> yeah. He or she is really messing with us. and likes to do weird things. Great example. My, my friend, John Tenney, he, uh, his, his favorite story is about John Edmonton and, and the space pancakes. I mean, this guy was poor farmer got a knock on his door, saw a UFO and someone knocked on the door and it was an alien who gave him a plate of pancakes. And he just was like, why are you doing this? You know? And he, he called the uh, air force or somebody and they all came out and they investigated and ch- tested the pancakes and they were fine, but they checked the guy out. They're like, he is not lying. And whatever happened to him happened, but we don't know what to make of it. And they said that all the real cases are all weird like that. They're not, Oh, a giant, you know, they're, they're not the, they're not the normal, like we saw a big flaming ball or, you know, kind of thing. They tend to be weird and have some kind of prankster aspect to them. Yeah, there's definitely something something weird going on. And, and you're right. Like once you start looking into this this world, like, um, you know, you can't cl- ever close your eyes again. <laughs> I have noticed that. You can no longer look away. Like something something's going on behind the, uh, the, the curtains there, behind yep. the scenes. So I did notice, like, um, if if anybody is familiar with the, uh, I think it's the Rider Weight deck, like that template. Yeah. Uh, you you tend to follow, like, like you know, you got your suit, the four suits, and the court cards, and the mm-hmm. major arcana. Um, but the designs themselves are are so so very different. Are you going to be including like a like a booklet for their interpretations? Yes. Okay. Yeah, there is. Because um, I made this deck though, even though it's 
you can take it as kind of tongue in cheek or as just a collector's art deck. It's also, you can read with it. I did very careful research on symbolism on um, which constellations are showing, moon phases, which plants are available in the pictures, all that stuff. I, I did a lot of research on, um, so it's legit. And I've gotten some great letters from tarot readers telling me, my God, this is cool. You really are working on this. And I was like, yeah, I, 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 if you're going to do it, do it. You know, it's, it, it's 78 drawings is a lot to do. You might as well make them right. Um, you know, <laughs> but um, I love the, I love that. You, I'm glad you brought up the um, weight rider thing because she's now getting, at least on Amazon, they're trying to push that. Look, she did all these cards and no one gave her credit. They gave Ryder all this credit, you know, and she's the one that did all the work and she, all this stuff was original. Same thing with the Crowley deck. Alistair Crowley gets all this credit, but the woman who painted everything and I'm forgetting her name, lady something. Um, I mean, her work is so original and so amazing. It's like, there's some really amazing women in the occult. There always have been, and they're very unique visions. I, I didn't even know that about the, the, the weight deck, that that was two people. I, I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, if you go, and actually if you go on Amazon and try to buy the deck, and you'll see one that says Amazon's Choice, it'll actually have the story there about how they're trying to push it. The story, we prefer you buy this deck because it does her justice kind of thing. They re-edited the colors and everything. And I'm like, I love that. Um, yeah, I'm trying not to stay too close to her stuff because it doesn't make a lot of it doesn't make sense for this hers was based on you know original italian and, and playing card stuff where um I, I mean this is like a weird deck so the the readings of this are going to show something strange going on around you and um from what i've been playing with already on them it, it's a little different <laughs> reading with these than uh, a lot different actually um but i like it so the so the actual meanings for each of the cards are going to be they're going to be different yeah, they're not going to, yeah, you won't be able to take them the same way you could take the straight deck. So you won't definitely want to read this, but also you could just, I mean, I'll, you know, if you want to interpret your own way, go for it. I did do some things that are clever, like connecting certain landscapes so that certain cards will have connections and you won't see it till you look and you're like, oh my God, that landscape keeps going through that card. And when they're side by side, they'll, it'll, you know, might make you think about that card in a different relationship. Oh, interesting. Well, there was a clip in your video where, where you did all of the, um, I think it was the Yeti cards, or, or was it the portal cards? They're all lined up next to each other, like in this big yeah. panorama. I did drew all the suits that way. Yeah, so cool. But they hook up with some of the other cards, too. So, yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, I wonder um, if you haven't thought of it already. You ought to create or design your own, uh, you know, specific spreads that's the word i was looking for spreads uh to include in that book that's a good idea make it shaped like a yeti footprint or something <laughs> yeah. this is the tic tac spread <laughs> tic tac spread <laughs> oh well um we are we are running up against time here but if you got a couple minutes i'd love to throw some random questions at you i save here for the end i do um and uh, i would love to ask you mm -hmm. so all right <clears throat> We've uh, talked about some of the biggest and most ridiculous misconceptions or myths about witchcraft with everything that you do, with your religions, with your art, with uh, your interests and involvement in the paranormal. What is the biggest misconception you've had to deal with that others have about you? Um, that it would affect my life negatively. Um, and when I got initiated to Santero, I was working in one of the biggest hat agencies in America. I had to shave my, my head was shaved and I had to wear all white for an entire year and not shake hands with people. I had, I was basically like kind of pure and chaste for a whole year. Um, I got promoted to senior vice president that year. Whoa. All my clients were totally cool with it. They're just, I'm just like, Hey, I can't shake your hand this year, but next year I can, and I can't wait to. And they're like, Oh, cool. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah. All right. If someone with no prior knowledge at all uh, was interested in practicing witchcraft, learning more about paganism or, you know, delving into any other aspect of the occult, where would uh, they start and what should they be most wary of? I, like anything else, there's, a, there's hucksters in every religion. And if you want to see the best, like most skeptical historical review of all the of the witchcraft religions read um crafting the art of magic and it's about 
you know, like a lot of Wiccans will tell you that their religion is from the Stone Age. It's this Paleolithic goddess cult. And that's just not true. It was invented in 1951 in England by Gerald Gardner. Yes, folk magic has existed for centuries. Yes, witchcraft has existed for centuries. But Wicca itself is a new religion. Very, very new. And it's this book goes into all those, like how almost every religion, especially in the cult, has taken everything from either the Golden Dawn or, or Aleister Crowley and created these new new cults and even they are stealing from the masons and everything it's all it's all together that'd be a good thing to look at um or get a good um there's some books like drawing down the moon by um i think margaret adler from npr wrote it's the most definitive book on on pagan religions ever written it's massive but it's really good you can there's chapters on everything from all the uh, events that go on around the world um to different types of unusual um, cults within witchcraft, like the Fey, which are the, the gay witches that are only gay witch cults. Um, there's a whole bunch of different things in there that, um, and she, she just did a phenomenal job researching. I think it's the best book I've ever read. All right. If you could go back and change one thing about your entire journey, what would it be? Hmm. I wouldn't. You wouldn't? No, everything's been yeah. the way it should be. All right. Honestly. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. I have no regrets about my religion. Good, yep. good. That's that's refreshing to hear. <laughs> you know, I know a lot of people have regrets, but I love that. And you've had such an interesting, <laughs> uh, thorough journey as well. Well, um, I just have one more random question for you. Uh, Mr. Dave, mm-hmm. would you be willing to teach us a spell? Sure. I've got a great one in mind. We were talking about, you know, do you hex people? And it's like, no. I, and I said, I have something better. I'm going to teach you how to do something you don't need to go to an occult shop to do. You already have everything in your house. And the ingredient is water and a grocery bag and a pencil. If you got someone who's bugging you, write their name down. You probably don't have parchment, so take a grocery bag. It's just as good. Tear off a little strip and write their name on it. Fold it up and put it in an ice cube tray with some water and freeze them. You will not hurt them. You will just keep them away. And that's the best and safest thing you can do. The first time I did it, and it was, I had a boss who was kind of one of those just big, burly, he thought he was, you know, he was Italian, but he kind of like played it up a bit kind of guy, like, hey, yeah, let me, you know, kind of guy. Mm-hmm. He um, was really rude to me all the time, and I did it to him. And he literally said to me the next day, you know, I, I'm really sorry. I want to apologize to you. I feel like I have to chill out around you. Like, I, I'm like he literally said, chill out. Oh my God. Um, but the, we call them peepsicles. Peepsicles. So make a peepsicle of somebody if they're bothering you. You won't hurt them. You'll just kind of let them chill out a little bit. It's like giving them a, a spiritual timeout. Do you have to keep it there, like in your freezer, for forever? Um, as long as you're worried about them. Oh, okay. Once they're stopping a problem, you can get rid of it. Yeah, yeah, I like that. So so non-invasive and 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 coming from a place of I don't I don't want to hurt you, but right. I, I just need you. Yeah, to... And I've even seen people do it, make it sweeter. You know, put some sugar in there with it or some honey, and make them feel better towards you. You know. Wow, that is very cool. Thank you, thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Um, where sure. can uh, where can folks find out more and and connect with you? So I've been on the internet so long that I'm in the Urban Dictionary and there's a Wikipedia page about me. So um, anything Dave Zilla, it's probably me. But um, on the on Instagram, I have Dave Zilla and Dave Zilla art. On Facebook, I have Dave Zilla art. I have a Threadless shop. It's Dave Zilla Threadless dot com. Um, and then my Kickstarter. Um, and you can just look up Tarot of the Unexplained and you'll find that. All right. And all of those links will be down in the show notes for people to conveniently check out. Um, how oh, about you? you uh, how about you take us out here? What's the message you would like to leave with everyone? I was, My message would be, you know, stop and think before you cast judgment on other people and what they believe. You don't know what someone else is seeing, um, understanding, and you know, we all have we all have different things that we're backgrounds that we're coming from. And, you know, try and put yourself in their shoes before you do anything or make make judgments about it. You don't know the other side. You really don't. Everyone has their own story to tell. So um, try to see theirs before you um, make your own, you know, cast aspersions on them. Lovely. 
Thank you so much, Dave. It was so nice to oh, finally pleasure. get to talk with you. I know. I've been listening to you since the start. <laughs> uh, from from the beginning. Yes. Yes. We've been we've been friends yeah. here for a second. So this was um this was really cool. Uh, it was my pleasure. Thank mine too. Thank you so much. I really hope you all enjoyed this conversation. I am so grateful to know Dave as a friend and a friend of the show. Please go give him a follow on the socials I'm including below. And if you loved our conversation today and anything my guest has said, please consider supporting the creation of the Tarot of the Unexplained. It's Friday as of this recording. And the Kickstarter campaign is live until Wednesday. So head over there, show him and his dedication to this project some love. And just a quick reminder before we close out that Paranorm Girl will be dark next week. Don't you sweat it. I will be back the following Tuesday with the official season four premiere, folks. Psychics and mediums, y'all and ectoplasm and parapsychological research and james randy Ah, we'll get into it so excited rate and review the show baby rate and review every single additional five star rating means i can reach new people don't believe me you don't have to believe me it's not up to me it's the algorithm folks send me your personal experience of having your palm read future told or great great grandmother mary contacted i'll read it at the top of an upcoming episode email the show at paranormgirlpod at gmail.com i look forward to hearing from you that is a wrap guys i'll catch y'all at the premiere stay safe keep the night light on and sleep with one eye open <laughs>